What's a blessing to be here today? Um, glad everybody can make it. And, um, you know, we've had some rough weather over the last couple of days, but thank God we can come and worship Him in a place that's warm, without any interruptions, and with, um, with His presence. So let's get right into it. Let's start with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Loving Father, we thank you for this day, yet again, that you have blessed us with. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for bringing us all here safely today to hear a word from on high. Father, it's been a blessing thus far from Sabbath school up until now, and I pray that your presence will continue to be with us. I pray that the words that are said, O oh Lord, will not be from me, but from you, and that it will be a blessing to all the hearers. I ask that you will be with those who may still be traveling to get here, that you will guide them there safely, and that your Holy Spirit will fill this place. Open our minds and our hearts to receive your word, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so the title this morning is Get Your House in Order. Get Your House in Order. So with a title like this, Get Your House in Order, what do you think of? Yes. Cleaning it up, putting away the mess, um, organizing it. That's very good. Organization, that's right. There's a lot of different things. But this morning, we're talking about our household, getting our household in order. And to give a quick um, idea of where we're going with this, in the book, Adventist Home, it says that fathers and mothers who make God, their first, who make God first in their households, who teach their children, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, glorify God before angels and before men by presenting to the world a well-ordered, well-disciplined family. A family that love and obey God instead of rebelling against him. Christ is not a stranger in their homes. His name is a household name, revered and glorified. <laughs> angels delight in a home where God reigns supreme and the, and the children are taught to reverence religion, the Bible, and their creator. Such families can claim the promise, them that honor me, I will honor them. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about a well-ordered household, and this gives an example of it, because once Christ is first in our households, this now sets the stage for us to get our households in order. We cannot have an ordered household without Christ in it. Because God is a God of order. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. The enemy, however, is not of order. He's about confusion. He's about deception. And so once we have Christ first in our homes, because everything starts in the home, then we can start to get things in order. So we're going to go through some examples of how the patriarchs had their households in order. And then we're going to try to see now how, what it was that they did that we can possibly do to do the same for our household. So in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 7, I'll start in 1 to 4. It says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So God is telling him that he's going to make him a great nation. He's telling him to leave where he is, to go someplace else. He's going to make him a great nation. He's going to bless him, and he's going to be a blessing. Did Abraham ask any questions? I'm asking you a question. Did Abraham ask any questions? No, he didn't. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Verse 5 says, And he took Sarah his wife, Sarai his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that 
they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. So who did Abraham bring with him? His family, correct? He brought his nephew Lot, he brought his wife, and he brought all the people, his servants, his household, um, his helpers, he brought them all with him. So he brought his family. In verse 6 it says, And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, of Sikkim, unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So Abraham did something very interesting. He left his, his, his country, his home. He took his entire family with him. And he went to this place that the Lord told him to go to. And what was the first thing he did once he got there? He worshipped him. He built an altar. Meaning he set a place where he can worship God. So by him doing that, Abraham, Abram, sorry, set the example for his family, for his household, for those that were with him. Not just for his wife and for Lot, but for all those that were with him. He set that altar so that they can worship God. God now speaking of Abram, whose name was changed to Abraham. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. What a blessing it is for the Lord to say, I know him, and, I will, and he will command his children, his household, after him. What was the example that he did? He set up an altar and he worshipped God. That was the first thing he did. And God is saying, I know this is what he will do. Because his children and his household, not just his children, they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And what was it that he spoke of him? He said that he will bless him and that he will be a blessing to those that's around him. So we see that the blessing when it comes to worshiping God, when it comes to giving him our all, it's not just for us, but it's for those around us as well. Let's look at Isaac. And the Lord appeared unto him, speaking about Isaac, the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee. Did the mic go off? Okay. Sorry about that. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. So God is saying once again, he's going to bless him. It's the same promise, the same covenant that he made with Abraham that's now coming through Isaac. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of of the Lord and pitched his tent there and there Isaac's servants dig a well. So what did Isaac do? He built an altar, right? Okay. And what's the what's the purpose of him building an altar? Worship to praise God. Put God first. He put God first. Thank you, Steve. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar and Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Phico, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee. So hold on a second. So the first thing Isaac did was set up an altar so that he can worship God. And now Abimelech, because in the backdrop of this story, Abimelech and, um, and Isaac and his wife had got into um, a mishap and Abimelech told him that he had to go. So Isaac thought that Abimelech hated him. Isaac went, built an altar, prayed to the Lord. But here in verse 28, it says that we saw. What did they see? What was it that they saw? They saw that Isaac was a man that worshipped God, was a man that put God first 
before anything else. And he did that as an example. And he saw, it says that, and we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And so when it comes to worshiping God, like I said, it's not just for us. It's for others around us because they will see that we're devoting our time. We're devoting our efforts. We're devoting everything to God. We're letting him lead out first. Remember it said that a well-ordered household is one that puts God first. Uh, verse 29, that thou wilt do us no hurt and have not touched, sorry, and we have not touched thee, and we have done unto thee nothing but good and have sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. And he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink, and they rose up um, betimes in the morning and swear one to another, and Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. Now here's the blessing. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged and said unto him, we have found water. Isaac was digging wells. He dug a few wells before there was nothing happening. He went, he built an altar, he prayed unto the Lord. Abimelech came and saw that he was a man of God. They had a pact between them, there was a blessing, and they were able to find water in that well. In Jacob's household, there was, um, there was a sin that was done against Jacob's daughter. And so two of his sons, uh, Simeon and Levi, went out to avenge what had happened to his daughter. And so Jacob heard of this thing, and he was like, there was something evil that happened. So the first thing Jacob did, it says here in verse 1, And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make thee an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest in the face of Esau thy brother. And Jacob said unto his household, And Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Do we see a pattern here? Do you see a pattern here? The Lord is calling us to put him before anything else. And here in Jacob, with Jacob, he ordered his household to put away the strange gods, put away the idols, put away the things that you put before God and put God first. Because these things will hinder us from being able to perfectly worship God as best as we can. And so by him doing this, it wasn't just for his household, it was everybody that was around him. And they understood they understood that putting God first would be a blessing. And he said that um, he's going to make an altar unto God who answered him in the day of his distress. God has an outstretched hand waiting to save us, waiting to help us in whatever it is that we're, that's going on in our lives. But it's up to us now to be able to put him first so that we can have that clear communication with him through Jesus. Amen. Amen. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. So there's influences also that may cause us from not being able to um, get our household in order. As we see in Abraham and Isaac and in Jacob, they put God first. Jacob had them put away all the influences, all the idols. An idol may not necessarily be a wooden thing on your shelf. It could be the television. It could be a car. It could be your house. It could be your job. It could be a lot of different things that you put as an idol that you put before God. Whatever it is that has your fondest affection that gets the most of your attention, that is your idol. And sometimes we need to search ourselves and we need to ask the Lord to help us to be able to put away these things. Hide them under the oak tree. Don't even hide them. Put them someplace where you can't find them again. <laughs> so that they won't creep back into your life. But only he can give you the power to overcome. It is impossible for any of us 
to live in such a way that we shall not cast an influence in the world. We all, we all have some type of influence, no matter how we look at it. But it may be for good or it may be for bad. No member of the family can enclose himself within himself where other members of the family shall not feel his influence in spirit. The very expression of the countenance has an influence for good or evil. His spirit, his words, his actions, his attitude toward, uh, towards others are unmistakable. If he is living in selfishness, he surrounds his soul with a malarious atmosphere. When we're in our homes, whether it's mother, father, son, daughter, whether it's mother, daughter, whatever your family dynamic is, we have to be very mindful of the things that we say, the things that we do, the type of attitude that we have, because it's an influence on those that are around us. As we saw with, with Isaac, he was a man after God's heart. He, he worshiped him, he set up his altar, and the people that were around him saw that, and it was a blessing, and they came to him and said, hey, we saw that you were a man of God. But we don't do these things just so people can say, hey, I know that you love the Lord. We do it so that we can draw others closer, so that we can let them know about God also. Amen? Amen. So we have to be very mindful of how we carry ourselves in the home, in the workplace, wherever we may be. It says here that while if he is filled, sorry, there is atmosphere. While if he is filled with the love of Christ, he will manifest courtesy, kindness, tender regard for the feelings of others and will communicate with his associates. By his acts of love, a tender, grateful, happy feeling, it will be made manifest that he is living for Jesus and daily learning lessons at his feet, receiving his life and his peace. He will be able to say to the Lord, thy gentleness has made me great. In other words, as it says before, those that honor God, God will honor them. But as it says in Matthew 10, 33, um, if we deny God before men, he will deny us before the Father. So let us be mindful. Wherever we give ourselves to the Lord, sorry, whether we give ourselves to the Lord or not, we are his. Ye are not your own. Ye are bought with a price. Do we know what that price is that we were bought with? It was the blood of the Lamb. It was Christ dying on the cross. That was the price that was paid for us. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. And Christ paid those wages for us. These are wages that we can't pay because we can't save ourselves. However, we have to remember that we're not our own. Whether we want to follow the Lord or we don't, he still bought us with a price. We are the Lord's by creation, and we are his by redemption. Therefore, we have no right to think that we can do as we please. Meaning, we can't go around within our homes or wherever it is and have this attitude of saying, well, this is how I feel and that's how it's going to be. Does that reflect the character of Christ? Does that reflect that Christ is living within you? No, it doesn't. So we have to keep these things in mind as best as we can that... Um, like I said, we have no right to think that we can do as we please. All we handle is the Lord's. We have no right of ourselves to do anything, not even to, sorry, we have no right of ourselves to anything, not even to an existence. So I can't say that I have a right to be here because I don't. It is the Lord that's allowing me to be here, amen, or any one of us. All our money, time, and talents belong to God and are lent us by him that we may accomplish the work he has given us to do. Amen? So here's the real question. How can I get my house in order? What steps do I need to take? Well, number one, you need to know your role. As it says here, I'm in charge in our relationship. My wife said it was okay to say that. <laughs> so it's funny, <laughs> very funny, but unfortunately, this is happening a lot today. It's happening a lot today. Members of the family aren't sure what their roles are, what their roles are. 
Husbands don't necessarily know their roles, or men don't necessarily know their roles. Women may not necessarily know their roles, or a wife may not know her role. Children may not know their roles. In some households, the children run the household. In some households, the wife runs the household. In some households, the men just don't even know what's going on. They just, they, they just live there. And they think that's all it is. But however, we've given counsel from God himself. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the what? The For the husband is the head and the wife, sorry, the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Meaning, husbands, we're not supposed to lord over our wives with our hand on our hip and our foot up and say, do as I say. That's not Christ-like. Because at the end of the day, as um, Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body, this is how the husband is supposed to do, be for his wife and for his household. He is the example. He is to follow the example of Christ. And so we've been given a commission by the Lord himself, and he's telling us exactly what it is that we should be doing within our households. A husband is considered the house band, as you mentioned earlier in Sabbath school. We have a role to play. We are the, we are the, the leaders. We are the providers. But also we are, we are also there to love our wives as Christ has loved the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, it says, but I know, sorry, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So God is a God of order. He sets things in order, and he puts things a certain way. But when we stray away from the word of God, when we don't um, take the time to look at the examples of how we can set our households in order, then things begin to get flip-flop, where the wife is in control of the situation, or maybe even the children. Christ is nowhere to be found in the household, and everything is in disarray, everything is in disorder. So once again, how can I set my house in order? So we saw the first thing that we need to do is to know our roles. What is our function in the family? What is the husband to do? What is the wife to do? The wife is the queen of the household, as a matter of fact. Let me not forget that. She is the one that teaches the children. She is the one that, she's the one that gives them their first lessons in life. The husband is there to help with that also. But the wife, she is the queen and mother of the household. And if the husband is not there, then the wife, she would be the one to call to worship and to set things in order as well. Amen? Amen. So what we need to do is ask for help. And where do we ask for help? Matthew chapter 21, verse 21 to 22, it says, And Jesus, sorry, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. So if we're having issues with getting our households in order, if we're not sure where to start, it's as simple as asking. Asking the Lord for help. And he says, believing ye shall receive. But we have to make the conscious effort to go to him and ask. We can do nothing in ourselves. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And it's from him that we get our help. Amen? Amen. Psalms 121 verse 1 to 2 says, I will lift my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from where? The Lord. My help cometh from the Lord, which hath made heaven and earth. Psalms 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. There's no question as to where we're going to get this help from. 
there's no mystery here at all. The question is, do we want the help and do we want to get our households in order? We should. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. Amen. So once we put now into motion that we want to get our households in order and we seek the Lord for understanding and we seek him for help, now we're seeking the kingdom of God because in getting our household in order, we're trying to set ourselves and our family to be one that follows after the Lord. And then we're trying to seek his righteousness as well because his righteousness is for our salvation. Amen? Amen. Psalms 119 verses 9 to 11 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? And the answer is here. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. What word? The word of God. With my whole heart I have sought thee. Sought With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let not. Oh, let me not wonder from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So there's practical ways how we can do these things. First of all, as the Bible says, we need to be doers of the word and not just hearers. We can hear these things all day, but we have to put them into practice. When Christ was here on earth, everything that he said, he did. He gave an example, and he gave practical examples, and he left these examples for us to follow as well. So by studying the word of God, it says, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So studying the word of God helps us to understand who Christ is and what it is that he wants for us, how it is that we can develop a well-ordered family. And like I said, a family, especially in, these, in this day and age, isn't necessarily the ideal with the mother and the father and the children. It could be an aunt and the children. It could be a mother and the children. It could be a father and the children. It could just be you. You still have to set your household in order. You still have to follow after the love of God. Family worship, very important in setting our households in order. Morning and evening, let all hearts be united in reverent worship. At the season of evening worship, let every member of the family search well his own heart. Let every wrong that has been committed be made right. We can make time for work. We can make time for breakfast. We can make time for whatever it is. But a lot of times we fall short in making time for God, especially when it comes to our family. One of the reasons why society is the way how it is today is because a lot of families don't spend time together. People are separated, everybody's doing this and doing that. And so they stray away from each other, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually they stray away from God. But family worship is a time where the family can come together and study the Bible together. And it doesn't have to be just long and drawn out, just reading scripture or whatever it is, but it's a time to reflect. How was your day? What has the Lord done for you today? Oh, did I wrong you today? Or there was something that you said earlier that made me feel a certain way. Sometimes just sitting down and talking about these things can resolve the situations. So these feelings aren't harbored up inside of us and then manifest into something else. You understand what I'm saying? Psalms uh, 92 verse 1 to 2 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. So this is also showing us the importance of having family worship. It draws us closer to God and it draws us closer together as a family. As a husband or as a man, you are the chief priest of the household. It is your responsibility to bring the family together and to read the scriptures together because our salvation is at stake. If we don't know the Lord, he's not gonna know us. If we don't spend time to try to understand and try to get to know who our creator is and what his purpose is for us, 
then really what is it that we're doing? Who are we dedicating our time to? What are we dedicating our time to? Then we find ourselves lost in the mix. We find confusion. We find chaos. We find the house divided. It says that the household where God is not worshipped is like a ship in the midst of the sea without a pilot or a helm. The tempest beats and breaks upon it, and there is danger that, um, that all on board may perish. And so if we have a household where God is not in it at all, if the only time that we speak about God or we open up our Bible or we give praise and worship unto him is on the Sabbath, then we have a problem. Because now we have, we have no type of real protection throughout the week. When we have family worship, or when we come together as a family, we're inviting Christ into the house, and we're securing it. We don't know what may happen tomorrow or the next day. Time is very short. We don't know what may happen when we go to sleep, if we wake up or not. But when we take the time out to come together as a family, it binds us together, and it binds us together with Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so if God is not in the household, who's, who's really steering that ship? Who's leading us? Or who are we following? Amen. For that matter. Time is short. We should plead with God for his blessings, as Moses pleaded with him in the mount. We have no time to wait. Our Lord is coming. And it is time to set our house in order. There's a great work to be done. And if you go to your neighbor with your heart all warm and glowing with love, do you not think that you can find the key to unlock your neighbor's heart? The trouble with our work has been that we have been content to present a cold theory of the truth. We have not let our hearts melt down before those with whom we work. Oh, that the Lord might quicken our understanding and give us a realization of the time in which we're living. Time is short, brothers and sisters. Amen. And now is the time that we should be drawing closer to God, not just individually, but as a family as well. Amen. Because remember, as we said earlier, everything starts in the home. And then from the home, we come into the church. The church is made up of what? Families. There are families here. I'm looking at a bunch of different families here. And it's a blessing. But these families now go back into the communities. And communities form society. So the things that we manifest and the things that we start in the home is very important. Especially when it comes to worshiping God and putting him at the forefront. Christ is the head of all things. He is the head of our families. He is the head of our marriage. He's the head of our lives. And we should devote the time in worshiping him morning and evening and throughout the week, both collectively and individually. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. These were the words that Isaiah gave to Hezekiah. These are the same words that are for us today, because we are sick unto death. The sickness that we have is sin. Sin is that sickness. And the Lord is saying that we need to get our houses in order. We don't know, as I said earlier, what tomorrow will bring. We don't know what is promised. However, through the examples that I've read from, the, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, showing the importance of setting our house in order, once we do these things, we draw closer onto the Lord, and he can do a work within us for our characters that we can never do, so that we may be more well prepared to meet him when he comes again. Amen? Only him can give us the ability to overcome sin. Only him can give us the desire to want to overcome sin. So I close with this. Joshua 24, verse 14 to 15. <laughs> it says, Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, 
and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. That's a message for us. Put away all these other things that hinder us from serving the Lord, that hinder us from having devotion, that hinder us from taking time to praise God. If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I pray, brothers and sisters, that this is something that we all desire to do. That we want to serve the Lord, the Lord wholeheartedly. Amen. Let not the cares of this world supersede anything that comes to serving the Lord. Amen. Take time, make time for the Lord. And if you can't, ask him to help you make time, and he will. He will break down the walls, he will take away the things, he will change things up. And he will make this happen for you because he loves you and he wants you to be in the kingdom with him. Amen. Let's close with a word of prayer. <laughs> Loving Father, I thank you, O oh Lord, for these words that you have given us, this solemn message about getting our households in order, O oh Lord. Some of us, our households may just be us. Some of us, it may be our entire family, O oh Lord. But I pray that you would help us where it is that we fall short, that we will search the scriptures, that we will spend time to study and to reflect on your goodness and your mercy, that you will give us a desire, O oh Lord, to have victory over sin so that we may be overcomers, O oh Lord. Help us to look at the examples that you've given us in your word, these things you have given us, O oh Lord, so that we may learn, so that we may understand. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you will come into the hearts and minds of the heads of all the households that are represented in this place here this morning, O oh Lord. That your Holy Spirit will speak to them and that they will not harden their heart against you. That they will understand that you will honor them that honoreth you. But those that deny you before men, that you will deny them before the Father. Help us, O oh Lord, to not be denied. But help us, O oh Lord, to be accepted and to be acceptable in thy sight. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.